the game of love. Oh my gosh, hey, oh, welcome. Hi, welcome, welcome, that's amazing, thank you for joining us today. Yes. It started long ago in the garden of Eden when I had a said to me, baby, you for me. So come on baby, let's start today, come on baby, let's play the game of love. Hey guys. Hello. It's Dan and Nancy here talking about marriage. Things we've learned over the last 25 years of being married and almost 27 years of knowing each other. So here's the key thing. Um, one of us made a list and the other wanted to wing it. So we're going <laughs> to wing it with a list. Does that sound okay? I wonder who's who. I don't know. <laughs> Let's start. So I think the first thing is that um, we, we decided long ago that we would always want to work on our marriage. And uh, there's lots of things that you need to do to work on your marriage, such as mm -hmm. taking classes. Like which ones? Yeah, we took the Alpha Marriage class several years ago, and then we took a class, um, I have to look at my notes, excuse me. <laughs> um, we, we led a class called Marriage on the Rock, mm -hmm. and we took that class first, and then we led it. And um, that was really helpful. And then now we're doing a Kirk Cameron series that's online that you can purchase. So mm -hmm. we're just always trying to get to know each other better. And uh, we're always learning things about each other. And mm -hmm. I don't think in a good marriage that you can ever say, oh, I totally get you now. And um, we don't have to work on this anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're just always in a pattern of wanting to learn more and doing what we can to improve our marriage. Yep. We've also taken the Alpha Marriage class and the Colorado Marriage Refresh. Uh, things as we've moved around, we found different places to go. We, we never miss up a chance uh, to take a class. And I think one of the key things is good habits. So we've, we've got several habits that we, that we do. Um, well, th <laughs> there's the habit. Uh, one of the things that we learned. Which habit? You know, the lasagna, the, the lasagna one. The physical, the physical habit. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, let's just get right into it. Um, okay, so physical intimacy, also known as making lasagna. Come on, baby, cause the time is right. Love your body with all your mind. Uh, we learned in one of our classes that there is a need versus want. And for me, that just made so much sense one time that um, Dan likes to have lasagna more than I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to figure out what was the actual need versus want on that lasagna. And once mm -hmm. we actually sat down and figured out, like, how many days is the actual need, um, that just made it so much more easy for me to understand mm -hmm. why we need to have lasagna yeah. and how often. And it sounds silly, but for some reason, like having that number has just, um, it, it's just, it just makes it make sense to me mm -hmm. in a really tangible way instead of like, oh, he always wants lasagna. Mm -hmm. And for me, it takes, takes off the whole wondering, waiting, watching for the sign, you know, the whole thing. And, and what it allows me to do is just to really care for her then. Because uh, with that need kind of taken care of and not have to worry about it, I can take care of her needs, which, which don't happen to resolve, you know, revolve around food. It's more like helping around the house and listening and uh, talking and playing games and doing things with the kids. So, you know, you have to meet each other's needs. And that was one habit that we learned that was super helpful. Yeah, very helpful. I would say our marriage just really improved after that class mm -hmm. so so we didn't we haven't always had a good time uh, the joke is you know we've been married 25 years like three of them happily that kind of a thing but but honestly uh, lots and lots of rough patches and we decided early on that that the non-negotiable is no matter what came at us you know whether we had uh, adoption issues or we had a miscarriage or uh, you know deaths in the family no matter what happened we were going to lean into each other and, and that was non-negotiable Mm -hmm. And um, we've actually had a really recent example of that because our daughter, uh, who's 15, attempted suicide last fall. Mm -hmm. And um, 
just because we've been through some other things, a miscarriage and international adoption and um, just some areas, some trials, um, because we've been through that and we've been married 24 years now, we just chose to really lean into each other on this one. And I'm not sure that we would have always done that in the past, but we really um, shared scripture with each other and prayed with each other. And we just went on a cruise together for nine nights. And um, we didn't talk about any parenting stuff other than one time. And we're just really trying to write it out together instead of trying to do it by ourselves. And um, we're inviting God into it, which we haven't always done. Mm-hmm. So the interesting thing, too, is that we've got... Um, Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. That was my uh, handy-dandy alarm for my King Supers free Friday download. That's a grocery store. I forgot about that. <laughs> so where were we? Oh, habits. So interesting. Yeah, we You never know when your marriage starts what you're going to remember. One of the things we remembered uh, from our marriage co- pre-marriage counseling was that you should have a date every week and a honeymoon every year. So the honeymoon we just got to take was perfectly timed. Yeah, it was a big anniversary and whatever, but um, just the time to take away just really restores you to a, a really mm, youthful relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's one of the key things we, we wanted to do this time on this honeymoon, if you will, was to have a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. We like to have fun. So that's a key thing. Don't take it too serious. We, you know, there's so much to do. There's so much. There's bills. There's you know retirement planning. There's parenting. There's work. Um, I don't even know how uh, how many people do it. We we get seasons where we're just burnt out and mm-hmm. we work too hard. And, and in the evenings it's screen time and phone time and iPad time, and that's not super good. Uh, you miss your connection with that and you shouldn't mediate your marriage through a screen and we're as guilty as anybody but um, when you get real face-to-face time and you get away and you you put all the devices in the in the drawer it's so much fun. But we also do use those devices during the regular day like we send each other really funny texts yeah. and mm-hmm. pictures and um, we do have a love journal where we sometimes write notes back and forth to each other that kind of goes mm-hmm. in spurts but there's, we're just constantly trying to um, work on it and have fun with it, mm-hmm. not make it really boring. Um, I'm pretty sure if you sat at our dinner table, you would <laughs> not think that we're boring. Most of the time we end up making out and our kids are completely grossed out. <laughs> That's good. You got to teach your kids how to be married and have fun because they, otherwise they won't know. They act like they are horrified, but we know that the best... Thing for them is for them to see us in love because mm-hmm. it makes them feel stable and mm-hmm. um, the fact that we can draw into each other even when we are really in the middle of something that would happen in our family that is not normal and happy mm-hmm. but yet we're really trying to still have fun yep okay so even though there's fun there's also got to be some rules so uh, I might be a little more structured on the rules so we got some rules um, so uh, first rule that I remember, uh, being I'm the money guy out of the two of us, we, we check in with each other on spending. So if it's over 300 bucks, we have to get each other's approval before we spend it. Except the one time we didn't do that, we uh, were buying a mattress at the sleep number place, and we decided, no, we don't need to sleep on this one, which is really ironic since it's a mattress. And we actually bought it, and it was like $2,000. And the next morning we woke up and we're like, What? So we called and canceled. Return that one. Learn that the hard way. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a nine o'clock rule when we're not agreeing on something or we're upset um, or there's a huge decision to make. We're early to bed people. So after nine o'clock, neither of us are any good. No good decision or conversation is going to come. So we just set it aside until the next day. Yeah. We literally just say nine o'clock rule and nobody's mad. We just table it. Mm. Uh, Maybe this one should have been first. We never use the D word. Uh, divorce. Uh, we don't use that word because uh, it, it doesn't help and, and the threat is, is terrible and we, we learned early on uh, that was advice to us and so uh, it's just never spoken. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's never done anymore in our house is there's no TV in our master bedroom. Uh, the master bedroom is uh, for fun and for restorative sleep. Mm-hmm. Yep, we, uh, we've never regretted that. We we're okay with just going up to our room and closing the door if we just need to talk or we need to breathe or whatever. We, Our kids are okay. And um, 
we don't we don't feel bad about doing that, and it really is restorative mm. on some hard days. So, uh, you should say what you mean. I guess that'd be a good rule. Yeah, like if you have something you really want for your birthday, whether it's a gift or a plan of something you want to do, don't just make your husband guess what it is. I did that for like 20 years. And uh, I've decided that it's just way better if you say, you know what, I'd really like to have a cupcake and go to the beach with the family. Or I'd really like to get Slurpees and play Monopoly on a blanket. Not a mind reader. <laughs> not. <laughs> and these are not things he likes to do. Mm -hmm. But he's definitely not a mind reader. And I have learned I just got to say what I want, say what I mean. Every year I ask for the same thing on my birthday. Lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hey Sherry, I hope you can edit all this. So, um, thanks so much for asking us to do this. Oh wait, you forgot to talk about learning what? patterns. Okay, so I like to be done early and wrap up. Yeah. Oh, there was one really funny thing that we just learned about each other, and um, just the thing about how we're constantly getting to know each other. I mean, we've we've started dating when we were twenty, and we're almost mm -hmm. forty-eight now. So, um, you know, you, you sometimes think you, you're done learning, but, um, the other day I, it was about vacuuming. You want to mm -hmm. tell the story? Evidently, about? I wasn't aware for many years that I get really agitated. Hi. <laughs> I get really agitated and upset, uh, when people vacuum around me, I don't like loud noises, which I didn't realize until she told me, well, you, you know, I don't vacuum around you anymore. And it was like total shocker. I had no idea about myself that that was a deal. Mm -hmm. I learned that like 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. I've never vacuumed around him. Mm -hmm. And I make sure the children do not vacuum around him. Mm -hmm. And he had no idea. And I didn't realize that uh, whenever I have a hobby, I end up uh, delegating that and, and giving her work. So if I want to, it's just a, a insane. And I didn't know that until last year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just interesting. You should always be curious about, uh, about your mate because over time, uh, they're going to change and grow. And if you're always curious, you're going to start seeing some of those changes too. And you can celebrate them instead of being worried that your boat's getting rocked. Or like, how about when you started making the bed about a year ago? <laughs> By accident? By accident. I He just started making the bed and I just was so happy every day he made the bed. And he still does. And um, last month we had a date and in the car, I was telling him about a book. I'm a big reader and about a book that I had just finished. And he said, hey, why don't you tell me about your book? <laughs> Total accident. And I was like, what? Is he asking me about my book? And that just completely filled my bucket. So we're just, we're kind of learning things about each other, even 20 some years into mm -hmm. it. And I think that that's the key to just enjoying each other and um, never thinking that you have gotten to the end and it won't get any better mm -hmm. and that, and actually that's why you do a marriage class like this you, you want to cut your learning curve i mean we we hit on things even all these years later that work and it's just good to work on your marriage because you'll find things sooner yep so are we going to end with our really funny move no do we have to yes okay so this is our newest move that we do in front of the kids in front of the kids I think my glasses are jacked.